Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. At the weekend past, we had the Nuremberg Toy Fair, which is a seminal event in the early year at which a lot of manufacturers drop their release announcements. So it was that we had the Revell and Italieri catalogues for the year released, as well as some announcements for Tamiya and others. Today, however, I'm going to be focusing on the Italieri catalogue. I'm breaking down the releases in the same way I did for Airfix and ICM. If you'd like to take a look at the catalogue yourself, it is available in PDF format from the Italieri website, and I'll include a link for that down below in the video description. Now before we start, the Italieri catalogue is, like many other manufacturers, a complete list of all of their current offerings for the year, which can mean that things get lost a bit. What I really like here about the Italieri catalogue is that they highlight all of the incoming kits in red, and they also put a 100% new on all of the brand new tools. They also show which kits they are phasing out, so that you can grab them before they go out of general availability, all of which is really helpful. So let's get started with the most exciting part, those new tools for 2024. Now I predicted in the Mostradamus episode of Beyond the Box that Italieri would release a 132nd MC205 based on the MC202 of 2023. Now although I was on the right kind of track, Italieri actually went the other way and did the earlier Mackie C200. Now that of course makes absolute sense, since the radial engine progenitor played a big part in the development of the 202, and it is a very different looking beast. So perhaps we get a 205 next year. Now if we judge this by the standard of the 202, then this will likely be a very nice kit. But I do hope that Italieri learn from the 202 and make the price of this a bit more in line with other manufacturers, since the MC202 was, in my and many others' opinions, a little bit rich for the mainstream modeler. Now before we go to 148th aircraft, I'm going to take a quick little diversion here and jump down to 172nd scale aircraft, because we have the F-35C, which was announced and delayed from 2023. Now it's good to see that it will arrive this year, as I'm anxious to compare it with the Orange Hobby Kit, which is the only other horse in the race for this particular version. Now the reason I wanted to cover 172nd scale first and cover that delayed kit is because in 148th scale we have a brand new F-35C. Now this makes absolute sense given that Italieri are also making the 172nd version and they also have a 148th scale kit of the B, which was widely praised as reception, so that does fit in with that line, though it wasn't necessarily expected. Speaking of delayed kits, we have the Lancia Stratos rally car in 112th scale that was also announced last year and I was really looking forward to, but unfortunately it didn't arrive. It's good to see that it will be released this year and hasn't just faded into the background. Sticking with civilian vehicles, we move to 124 scale and the Ivco Stralis S-Way truck cab. Italieri already has an extensive lineup of trucks, so it's no surprise they're releasing this, though it's not really my thing, and I don't know much about the vehicle in question, so let me know in the comments below if you think that this is a welcome issue. Moving to AFVs now, and the last of the new tools, we have the ever popular M4A3 E8 Sherman, this time in 156 scale as Fury, from the historically dubious movie of the same name. 156 scale is also known as 28mm for those skirmish wargame fans, and this joins a whole bunch of 156 scale vehicles in this year's catalogue, which probably reflects the popularity of bolt action and scale models for that from the likes of Rubicon. Next we have kits listed as new, which means that something about them is new, and I'll try to decipher what that is, but without more information at this stage, some of these might be actually different on release. First up is the Eurasian RE202 Ariette. This is a 2009 tooling that has been boxed by Tamiya and was last issued by Italieri in 2011. This looks like a new scheme as it has the super decals listed, but otherwise I think it's probably unchanged. Second is the Mirage 3E. This was first released by Italieri in 2004, but the kit itself is much older, being the original Eschi tooling from 1980. I don't expect more than a new decal scheme here, since it's also listed as having super decals. Third, we get the P40F Warhawk. This is another old kit, this time the AMT Stroke Ertl tool from 1995. This was first released by Italieri in 2007 as the M Stroke N version, and then again in 2012 as the E Stroke K. This will be the first time they've released the F version, 
though AMT did release that in 1997, and as it is another super decal listing, I expect the main changes are going to be those schemes. Next in line is the JU87G1 Stuka, the Kanonenvogel. This was first toured in 2010 as the B2 version, and it was issued in 2013 as the G2, which has the extended wings of the D version, so I imagine this is a blend of the different kit parts, since the G1 had the shorter wings of the B without dive brakes, and this kit isn't shown as a super decal kit. The P51D stroke K in ETO Aces is actually a Hasegawa kit from 1991, which Hasegawa have released no less than 36 times before Italieri first had it in 2015 under the Pacific Aces theme. Hasegawa haven't released it since then, so whether they sold the tooling to Italieri or this just represents the competition for a very iconic and well-represented aircraft, I'm not sure. Cessna 172 Floatplane. This is another old 1981 Eschi tooling, although Italieri have never released a floatplane version, though that was an Eschi release, so I expect that that's what this is. The PH2 Eurocopter is an Italieri tool dating back to 1995, and I did actually have this kit in its original form, the HAP Eurocopter Tiger. The PAH2 version came out a year later in 1996, and it was also boxed by Ravel and Heller, the last time in 1997, so this has been off the shelves for a long time, and I'm sure some people would want to pick it up. Moving now to 172nd scale aircraft, the first one we have is the TU-22 M3 Backfire C. This is another 1980s Eschi stroke Ertl tooling, specifically from 1989, and this was released by Italieri in 2003. So it's been a couple of decades since we've seen it. I've actually got and built this kit, and it's a huge chunky beast, which, as it's almost impossible to see anything on the inside, makes it quite an imposing model that the lack of detail doesn't really detract from. Next is the Regian RE2002 Ariette again. Now back in 1971, when Italieri still had the AE in the name, they produced this kit, and we'll have to see whether it is indeed just a new scheme, or it's somebody else's tooling, or what else has been done to bring the old tool up to modern standards. It is listed with Italia's super decals, so maybe it's just the scheme. C119 Tanker. This will be the eighth time this 1985 original tooling has been released by Italieri, though I believe this is the first time as a tanker, which does add a different spin to it, and it is the only kit of this aircraft available in 172nd scale. This is also listed as having super decals too. The F-15E Strike Eagle is another original Italieri tool, this one dating back to 1988. It was last released as the E version in 2011, so I suspect a simple re-livery again this year. The mill MI-24P stroke MI-35P. This was originally taught as the MI-24D variant in 1992, and I think that this particular version was supposed to be released in 2021, but never actually happened. The D version has been released 20 different times by eight different companies in various iterations, but never as the P, so it'll be interesting to see what this looks like when it happens. Originally toured as the H-19B in 2000, this is an Italieri tooling that was last released in 2007 as the H-04S-3. It's never actually been released as the HAS-22, so I imagine there will be some helicopter enthusiasts really looking forward to this one. Moving to 112th scale vehicles now, and the first up is the Bugatti Roadster stroke Monte Carlo. This will be familiar to most, since this was a new tool just back in 2022, but this release we have the Monte Carlo race version, with its spare wheel on the side, and I expect a fair few other details too. Next is the 1968 Fiat 500F. This is a 2017 original tooling, but in 2024 we're getting the upgraded edition with photo etch and super decals. This iconic car has a big following, so I'm sure it'll be well received. Going to 124 scale vehicles now, we have the Volvo FH Low Roof. This is based on the FH4, which was a new tool in 2018. From what I can see, there seems to be quite a lot of new cab work on this for the low roof variant, and I'm sure it'll be welcomed. Next is the Ivico Turbostar reefer truck. The Turbostar kit goes all the way back to a 1987 tooling, though it's been updated in the 1990s and 2000s for various iterations. 
The reefer truck again departs from prior versions quite a lot, so I expect this will also feature a lot of new parts. Next is the Scania 770S V8 White Cab. This is an even newer tooling. The 770 was released last year based on the 2022S730 Highline. This seems to primarily be a set of two new schemes, though hardcore truck modelers do feel free to correct me here. The Opel Blitz tank truck was originally toured in 1985, but again it's been given a full mould upgrade in 2011, and it was released last year in its classic iteration, so it'll be interesting to see what this tank truck version looks like. This is actually an old Protar kit from 1995, which was released by Ravel, and then it seems to have been acquired by Italieri, who last released it in 2019. This is the 1992 tooling that has been released by Ravel, Testers and Heller, and was reissued in 2021 with new parts, and I expect the new parts we'll see in this release will be down to any racing changes and livery. The Bugatti Royal Coupe Napoleon is a 1984 original tooling that was slated for release last year, and I'm not sure that that actually happened, but it is down for release this year with new rubber tyres. Kicking off 135th scale military kits now, we have the Semaventi M43 Basotto. Now this is labelled with new moulds, but not 100% new moulds, so I think this is probably based on the M42 released in 2020, which itself was based on the old 1970s M40. Given Tamiya released the M42 in 2021, and the superstructure of the M43 is completely different, I suspect that this has the new M42 lower hull, and then all the rest will be new tooling, with no trace of the original 1970s kit, but we'll have to wait and see. The LVT4 Water Buffalo was released in 2000, so other than the re-livery, I'm not sure what's going to be new here. First released as the M113 in 1994, this kit was originally tooled as the M901 Hammerhead a couple of years earlier in 1992. The last release of it in M113 form was as the ACAV in 2016, but this time it returns with new flexible tracks. The late production version of the AUS E Tiger 1 will be the 11th release of this kit. I've actually done this model and it's not bad. Here it features both Lincoln length and glueable rubber tracks. This is a 2004 tool which was also released on the last anniversary of D-Day in 2014, so it's not really surprising it's coming out this year. Italieri have never done the M41 version of the Semaventi, but given the return of the M14-41 Caro Amato, I expect this might feature a new superstructure on the base of that tank's tooling, as per the real thing. Now we have a whole swathe of 156 scale military vehicles being released, and as they're down as new, but have been released before, I expect these are all new schemes. Originally tooled in 2014, we first have the M4 Sherman 75mm, SD KFZ 171 Panther ALFS A, and the Cromwell Mark IV. Originally tooled a year later in 2015, we have the Tiger, the Stug III, the Panzer III ALFS JLM or N, and the M8 stroke M20. Two kits toured in 2017 are the Joseph Stalin JS2 and Char B1 BIS. And finally, tooled in 2020, we have the Italian tanks and Semaventi. The only new entry in 172nd scale military is another golden oldie and another Eshi tool. This one originally being the Patton tank in 1987, but also released as the M60A2, the A3 and Blazer in that same year. Italieri first released the Magak 6 version of this kit in 2017, followed by the M60A1 in 2018. Also being added to the complete modelling sets line that Italieri brought out in 2023, we have a couple of other kits. The first of these is the Spitfire Mark 9, which is the 1998 tooling, which isn't a bad kit, but not necessarily one I'd choose for a complete novice, as it does have some slightly awkward fiddly parts in it. 
The second is the F-22 Raptor. This was actually a new tool in 2000, and I think it's a much better starter kit, since it's simpler, more imposing, and has a much simpler paint scheme. We then have the Back Again category, which seem to be simple reissues. To start that off in 148th aircraft, we have the G91 R1-3-4 Gina, which is a 1979 Eshi tooling. A little bit later than that is the A20B Boston, which is a 1994, but again, it's not an Italiari tooling, it was originally an AMT stroke Ertl design. Finally, we have the Wessex UH5, which, which hailing from 1996, is actually an original Italiari. We then move to 172nd scale aircraft and start off with the BF 110 C3 C4 Zestora. Originally tooled as the G version in 1994, this seems to be a straight reissue of the 1995 conversion to the C variant, which hasn't been released since that date. Next is the ME 410A1 Hornice. This was tooled in 1999 and last released in 2013, and it seems a bit of an odd release given Airfix's new tool of the Hornice last year. Perhaps they're just trying to ride on the coattails of any renewed interest in the subject from that release. Next up is the Cant Z501 Gabbiano. This is a 1972 Italieri, again from when they had the AE in the name, tooling. And it's quite an unusual and slightly different flying boat. From 1988, again another Eschi stroke Ertl release, we have the EF-111A Raven. Going back to 1978, we have the Focke-Wulf FW-190D9. This kit is pretty ubiquitous, you'll probably see it at model shows where you can pick it up for a couple of pounds, and it's been released 17 times by six different companies. It's a bit odd that they're releasing this kit at full RRP when you can pick it up, as I say, very cheaply at model shows. The F-84G Thunderjet is actually a 2000 Academy tooling. And then we have the EH-101 stroke Merlin HAS-1 tooled in 2002 by Italieri. In 135th scale military kits, we start off with the Elephant, a 1973 Italieri original tool. And then we have the Sturmgeschutz 4, which is a little bit later from Italieri, being a 1976 original. We then slip back to 1974 for the Chevrolet 15 CWT, but this is actually a Max Plastic model, and we will hear that name again. The 7.5cm RSO with Pac-40 are 1997 new parts on a 1976 Tomy Original Tooled RSO. Another 1970s Tomy release is the GMC 2.5 ton 6x6 truck, this one hailing from 1977. The M8 Greyhound is an original Italieri kit, first issued in 1998. And the AS42 Sahariana was actually tooled in 2006 by Italieri. The M14 stroke 41 complete with Italian infantry, was last issued in 2017. And the DMAG D7 with German paratroops was issued in 2018, based on an original 1999 Italieri tool. The Jagdpanther with Winter Crew was a 2019 issue, based on an earlier 1994 original Italieri tool. And the M1 155mm gun with crew was originally a 1972 Max Plastic model kit. In 172nd scale military kits, we have the Panzerkampfwagen 5 Panther A. This is another release of the 1974 Eschi Panther kit, which Talieri last released 20 years ago. This will be the 15th release of this kit across 10 manufacturers from its introduction, which probably says something about it, because it is quite a nice little model. We also have the DUKW Duck, which is a 2004 Italieri tooling, last released in 2010. For 124th scale vehicles, we have the Scania T143 M500 top line. That was first released by Italieri in 1995. 
another Scania, this time the 142H 6x2 canvas. This was actually a 2011 new parts on a 1982 original tool. So this is a re-release of that. The DAF 95 Master Truck dates back to 1989 from Italieri. And the Mercedes-Benz SK Eurocab 6x4 comes from the following year, again tooled by Italieri in 1990. The last of the back again releases on this list is actually a submarine. In 135th scale we have the Biber or Bieber U-boat. This was originally released in 2010 by Italieri and it hasn't been released since so I'm sure there will be many people looking forward to getting this one again. Italieri also have some items in the catalogue which are listed as 2023 X catalogue, meaning they were released last year but weren't actually announced in their catalogue for the year. So I'll include them here just for completeness. First up in 148 scale aircraft we have the Hurricane Mark IIc, which is based on the 2013 Mark IIc, which was upgraded from the original tool in 2011 of the Mark I. In 172nd aircraft we have the Jaguar T2 RAF trainer, based on the 1996 original tool. And we also have the AMX-T, the twin-seater, which was based on the new AMX single-seater that came out earlier in 2023. In 135th scale military kits we have the Dodge WC 56-57. Again, this is another Max Plastic model dating back to 1974. And if you recognise these kits, it's because they were released by Airfix in the 70s as well, in various guises. I actually have the Dodge Command version from Airfix of this particular kit, and I've built that and I'll be showing that in an upcoming video. So make sure you're subscribed, and click that notification bell and set it to all to make sure you don't miss that. Next we have the Bedford QL truck. This is another 1974 tooling, this time from Peerless Max. We have a second DUKW Duck, this time it's a 2002 Italieri tooling. And then we have the Caro Amato P40, a tooling from 2009 by Italieri. So that's everything from Italieri. It seems a bit odd to me that we have some kits that were delayed from 2023 as well as some kits that were released in 2023 but never announced. Although we know how schedules and like can change and delays happen and so on, so perhaps it's not so unusual. I'm still looking forward to the 112 scale Lancia Stratos as well as the F35C in 172nd scale that I was expecting last year. The 132nd scale MC200 makes sense, but I think it's a much less handsome aircraft than the 202, so it doesn't particularly appeal to me in the way that that kit did. Trucks are also not really my thing, but I do appreciate that Atelieri has a good range of releases, and I'm sure the Ivico and other trucks will find an appreciative audience. Likewise, the 156 scale Fury and other armour fall into a space outside my interests, but are likely to be appreciated by the Bolt Action and similar war games communities. The rest of the releases are really a very mixed bag though. We have kits first tooled well over 50 years ago, rubbing shoulders with those tooled in the last five, which, without any clarity on that, seems disingenuous. I've repeatedly denounced companies like Revell for this sort of practice, and whilst pricing remains to be seen, it doesn't seem like there's anything on the box to indicate the age or origins of these kits. Now I'm sure someone used to the likes of modern trucks, armour or aircraft from Atelieri would be very disappointed on receiving a Mirage 3 from Eshi, for instance. This is extremely basic by comparison. Now, as with the vintage classics, it's not that there isn't a market for these kits, or that I'm not personally happy to have the chance to pick some of them up that I missed before but the lack of clarity is the issue here. Please, manufacturers, just be honest with us about what you're offering and price it accordingly. I think it will only help you in both the short and long term because it's not like there aren't a variety of platforms that people can shout about these practices now. So who exactly are you trying to fool? 
Overall, this is a very traditional feeling release from Italieri. On the one hand, I really like the catalogue, with the incoming and the outgoing kits highlighted, the brand new stuff called out. Italieri also has a very broad range of subjects and scales, probably one of the best of the mainstream manufacturers. We're also getting some really nice new things, and they call out some new things we got that we didn't necessarily think we'd get last year, even if some of them were not actually new. And that brings me to the other side of the coin. Six new tools, including two that were supposed to land last year, is not a lot. Yes, they are also updating other kits, but many of these appear, at least at this stage, to be just new schemes, and some of the kits they're going on are ancient, and weren't even particularly good at the time. They're also issuing some very old kits, like the Max plastic kits. Now, ostensibly back again from the Italieri range, but actually more like back from the dead, as the bones of their old steel tools are dragged up from some forgotten basement. So, whilst on the face of it this appears to be a pretty solid set of releases, I think it's much more like a thick layer of makeup applied to a variety of kits of indeterminate age and origin. It seems that Caveat Emptor should still be your guide when buying from Italieri, which is a shame because they do produce some nice kits of some otherwise very underrepresented subjects. I think Italieri need to do a lot more if they want to try to catch up with Airfix, for instance, and even more to get to the level of the newer, younger kids on the block like ICM and MiniArt. Putting a new set of rubber tyres or glueable rubber tracks into a 30-year-old kit is just not going to cut it anymore. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.